Well, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news for Logos Bible Study Software fans. First of all, the good news, it is now a lot cheaper to get some awesome tools and resources through Logos Bible Study Software. And I suppose the bad news is that they've now shifted to a monthly subscription option. I'll go over the pricing details of their new plan. Logos did send me access to one of their premium subscriptions in exchange for this review. I'm gonna tell you three things I really like. Look at three awesome features. We'll go over pricing and I'll let you know what I think and whether this is software that you should use in your personal study of the Bible and in your ministry. And perhaps one of the surprising additions now to Logos Bible Study Software is that they're using artificial intelligence. Yes, AI now is embedded into their software. And maybe your reaction is gonna be similar to mine was when I heard that and you'd say, well, how do we know that the artificial intelligence doesn't have a bent in one direction? You could ask yourself, is the artificial intelligence bent in a conservative direction? Is it bent in a liberal direction? Is it bent with a particular denomination in mind? And these are some of the questions I think users are going to continue to ask. And what Logos is saying is that their artificial intelligence is using their library of hundreds of thousands of resources and books, and that is what it is referencing and searching. But we can check that out, and I'll show you a few of the features that I really like. So one of the really interesting features now with artificial intelligence is their summarize tool. So you can actually summarize any bit of content in your library. Now, when you have a Logos, Bible study software, historically you have bought a package of books alongside a, a number of features. Now you're no longer purchasing it, you're, you're getting a subscription. For those of you that already have Logos 10 or a version before, don't panic, you don't have to do anything. You can continue to use those. I'm still using my Logos 10 books. Nothing in my books has changed now that I'm using this subscription model. But now you can summarize any of the resources that you have in your library. So for example, you can summarize the Bible. Here we are with Romans chapter five. And I open this little sidebar and this little icon right here is our artificial intelligence icon. I can actually click this. It's gonna give me a summary of Romans chapter five. Now I think that's pretty handy to give you a quick synopsis of any passage of scripture. I've read through a few of them. It seems to do a really good job of summarizing the scriptural content. I can't see myself so much using that for chapters of the Bible. Where I can see myself using it is in a book that you have, a theological book that's really complicated. Let's go over here. This, I believe, is the most complicated book that I have in my library, at least that I've had to read uh, start to finish. This was a book I had for one of my seminary classes, Paul, an Outline of His Theology by Herman Ritterboss. I think if I hold up over here, it'll show you. There you go, Herman Ritterboss. This is translated, I believe, from Dutch into English, and it is dense. It This was the book in seminary where in the forums online, all the seminary students would joke about how difficult it was to read through one of these chapters. And so this is a resource where I could see reading a chapter and then going over here and having their artificial intelligence summarize it for me and see, did I even get the, the gist of this book? Ooh, look, it's having, the artificial intelligence is having some trouble summarizing Ritterboss. I love it. Let's see if it can do it. Trying, trying, trying. Gonna take a hot minute. Okay, so I wasn't the only one that had problems digesting this amazing book. It's a really good book. We all, a number of us in, in the seminary class said, we think we would really enjoy this book if we got to read it slowly for fun, but having to read long chunks of it was quite difficult. Okay, so there you go. It gave me a summary of that chapter. And you can't do like an entire book, but it will let you do short chapters right here. It's doing chapter uh, seven. And I think the summarize tool is actually pretty handy. So you can use that in just about any book or resource that you have in your library. Sticking with that theme of artificial intelligence, we now have the option to do a smart search. And I'll give you an example of that here. So you over here on the left in my search box, you see I can search all. What it is also going to do, it's going to use artificial intelligence to search not just my library, but Logos's library. Now, if I don't want to do that, I can come over here and just search my books in my library. But let's just, for example, we'll try this out. What is justification by faith? And we'll hit the old enter there and let it do a little smart search. One of the things that it's gonna do, it's gonna give me my artificial intelligence synopsis here. You can read the highlight there. And then what's interesting is it's going to now start recommending books. You see this little lock icon over here. Those are books I do not own. If there's no lock icon, those are books I do own. I have a few thousand books 
in my library, but it's also going to grab some books. I actually kind of like this feature, especially if you were in a seminary class, maybe you have to do research, or maybe you're going to do a teaching series on a certain concept. You want to see what other books are out there on a specific topic. You can make your question as specific as possible. And then I can click this here and it's actually going to show me how much is this book? Here's a $6 book that I don't currently own in my library, which I could add. Now I don't have to do that. If I want to just do books that are in my library, I can click one and it's going to take me right to that topic. So here's justification by faith. And it's giving me a summary from a Genesis, Genesis commentary. I can keep on searching for other examples here. You can see a lot of these I don't own. I kind of like the idea that I can search for something and search for other books that Logos has in their catalog that maybe I want to purchase to do a certain study, or maybe you're writing a paper for a course or something like that. Now, again, if I want to just do my books, I can just do my books. I can hit enter. And then once it gives, it's still going to give me my artificial intelligence summary, but now I'm going to see all the books that I own, which typically I don't search Logos's catalog. I stay within my library. And then lastly, I want to talk about the clippings feature that I use all the time. When I am studying a topic, maybe I'm studying to prepare a sermon or I'm studying for a course, I use the clippings icon. All you got to do is you can highlight something that you're reading. So here's my justification by faith. I can uh, click it with my right mouse button, take my selection, and you can see down here it says add clipping. You can make a separate clipping document. So if I was going to study justification by faith, I would make a clipping document titled justification by faith. As I am doing my research and study, I'll keep adding clippings in there. And then let me open one of those and I'll let you see another one that I've done. So documents, let's find my clippings document. Here's one exegetical word study for a paper that I'm working on. And this only has three clippings right now. But the reason that this is really handy it can keep all of my highlights and the, the snippets that I want to add to my paper. I have them all here. I can jump back to the resource where I found them really quickly, but also so that I have my bibliography prepared so that I can cite all the sources that I've used. Logos for writing papers for seminary has been great because it will do a bibliography for me automatically. So I really like the clippings feature. You can do that on your iPad as well. Usually if I'm reading a book in Logos, I will read on my iPad. I can highlight, add to my clippings documents. It really makes doing research really easy. But now let's talk pricing. How much is it going to be for you to add a subscription? Now, if you are not a Logos customer right now, they have three tiers, premium, pro, and max. Kind of sounds like an iPhone launch or something. But those three tiers start at $9.99, $14.99, and then $19.99. Really, when I think of all the features that are in any three of those, I think that's a pretty good deal. It actually gets a little bit cheaper if you go to an annual model. Now, will these prices get more expensive moving forward? I don't know. I think time remains to be seen. How many books do you get with those levels? I think that is an important feature. And let me pull it up here. So our monthly price here with the premium, $9.99, with the Pro, $14.99, and with the Max, $19.99. And another good option going on right now is they will let you try it for 30 days free. Go to Logos.com, click the start a free trial, go over to that monthly, and it's going to tell you you've got 30 days to try it before that subscription kicks in. I think that's a good way to see if you like some of these new features that they have included. And then you can go on Logos's website. You can click the link in the description if you want to see how much... Uh, resources and the specifics of what comes with each but scroll down i think this one's important included books we have in the premium they've got 250 books that are included the pro goes up to 500 and then the max goes up to 600 and if you if you click that it'll show you bibles commentaries you can even look at what commentaries are included Let's see if we pull uh, any that we like here yeah you can search through all of these and see how many more you're getting with the different uh, subscription levels. I think that's important. Now, if you already own Logos, particularly if you own Logos 10, it is even cheaper to grab one of these subscriptions. I want to say with my current Logos 10 package that I already own, it said to do max was $9.99 a month for me, or there was a discount annual. I believe the annual came out to about $90 a month. So if you're currently a Logos 10 owner, that is a really good deal to get all of those features. 
Now, if you really enjoy what you currently have with Logos, by all means, carry on. Keep doing awesome Bible study and do it free 99. You're still going to be able to use your books. You're still going to be able to use those tools that you've had in your prior Logos package. And I think that's great. But maybe in the future, you want to upgrade. You want to get into it. I actually think it's uh, there's a lot of value here. The other thing that you can do if you're new to Logos and you don't have a lot of books, they do have libraries that you can purchase. So they've got multiple tiers of library. And historically, that's how Logos has, Logos has worked, where you can buy a pile of books at a really discounted rate. So let's look here at the portfolio library. Now, one of the interesting things here is you'll notice you actually have to have a subscription in order to purchase the library. Now, Logos has continued to say that anytime you purchase a library of books, you own those forever. You have purchased them. They're never going to take those away, but you have to be a subscriber to actually purchase one of these new 2025 library packages. I'm not planning to do that. I have a ton of books already in my Logos library, more than I'll ever be able to read. But hey, I guess now I can use artificial intelligence to summarize some of those that I'm not going to be able to read. Well, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think this shift to a monthly subscription is a good Good change for Logos. Is this something you're going to try out or what other questions that you have? Thanks. This is Jason and I will catch you in the next one.